Hey there, everybody. How's it going? Um, <clears throat> this is just a little video um, for me. I, I don't know how I feel right now. So um, I finished the I finished writing the next Hank Bradshaw book, Dead Dame Curse, and um, I finished it yesterday. Did I finish it? I finished it. And then read it and went through it, um, just seeing if any of it made sense. Um, because this book is a little different um, as far as Hank goes, because um, it's the first time I tried to take um, my hard-boiled detective dude and put him in a like Agatha Christie type uh, mystery to solve and um, it was weird I didn't know how it was going to go um, and I'm glad I went back through it um, but you should go back through your stuff but like in going back through it I realized um even stuff in that first chapter I posted up on Patreon. There were things said in that chapter that I had to um, change. I had to go back and change a bunch of stuff in the first chapter because I had um, changed how things were going when I started writing it. So um, that was interesting. Um and then one like one of the things that just like blew my mind is that one of the characters last names is Hall. Like you walk down the hall, okay? And for some fucking reason, and I don't know if this was a like a autocorrect spell check thing or something like that, but for some reason half the time it says Hill. And um I'm like what the like I'm just like totally confused I don't know why I would have done that um but whatever so that was really confusing I'm like who the fuck is this guy <sighs> but um it was just it was weird like um being away from this character for as long as I have and then going back and um doing like a completely new story <clears throat> that is completely different from how that character has worked in the past was really tricky. And um, I guess the best way to describe the writing of it <clears throat> is that like, and he even says a line, like, really early on in the book. He says, when in Rome. And I think that is, like, you know the saying, like, well, when in Rome, act like the Romans kind of thing. Or do as the Romans do. Um, and I feel like there was a lot of this book where um, I realize now why... for the most part, hard-boiled detectives aren't in, um, uh, what do you call it? Cottage house mysteries or whatever like that. Because, um, they don't put up with, with bullshit, you know? And so it was tricky to keep coming up with ways to make Hank not just kind of go in guns blazing and like, take care of the situation um and in doing the research that i did for the book um i actually learned a lot of things about psychology and that was something that i wasn't expecting that i would have like stumbled upon so 
and the basics of what I learned in doing that research is basically when certain diagnoses or diagnoses or however you say it um, were coined or when certain types of mental illness were discovered um, and the most interesting thing about that is finding out how before like a certain term like say bipolar for instance before that was coined like a decade before that or a generation before that that same sort of thing was called something else and lumped in with something else if you know what I mean and so it's almost as if mental health has this pyramid of like all these things are together oh and now these things are together and then a few years go by nope only these things are together and then by the end you get to this one thing up here and probably in another 30 years or something what we call bipolar might be um, three different illnesses that are all completely separate um, or not illnesses but like um, what's the word like uh, or I guess that would be a mental illness um, I, guess, I, I guess is how that works so that was really interesting I um, just found all that stuff really interesting and like learning the um, when nature versus nurture was coined and when self-fulfilling prophecy was coined and um, just all this it, it's just really interesting um, and I never ever thought that that would be anything I would need to be like looking into I don't know if you could hear that I might be killing background noise or whatever but anyway so it was really fun um, I feel like I need to kind of go back and um, I mean I'm definitely gonna go back and clean up some things that again I felt clunky or I felt were clunky um, <clears throat> But I think the most interesting thing, and I guess this would be advice for writers, if you're writing something and you had this whole like subplot or this um, part of the main plot, and as you're writing and you feel like, oh, you're like, God, this is like a stretch. I don't think this is going to work at all. Like, ooh, I don't know. Um, if you ever have that, don't get rid of it right away. Finish the draft you're on and then go back and read it and see if it works. Because I was 100% about to throw out this piece of the puzzle that I thought was totally unbelievable, um, complete garbage, and I'm like, well, when I was outlining this, I thought it was a good idea. But, um, like, as I'm writing it, this is just, like, bullshit. Like, no one would ever believe this in a million years. And then um, I finished it and read it. And when I read it, it actually works fine. It makes really good sense. And it actually really does a lot to help with the way the book ends. So that was something I learned because, like, honestly, I was, like, seconds away from just, like, control F, find this thing, and just delete it. Um, because I just thought it was so fucking stupid when I was writing it. Um, and another thing, I did a video a little while ago about writing from the middle and talking about how... Um, it was really tricky for me because um, the middle four chapters, well, not the middle four, but like four chapters in the middle of the book were really tricky for me to write and took a while, um, took longer than the rest of the book to write. And um, how 
it, it's funny because when I started writing the book, I was writing um, anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 words a day. And then when I got to the middle of the book, I was writing like maybe a thousand. And um, sometimes I like wouldn't even write the next day and be like, Ooh, I don't know, I don't know. Well, then once I got past that middle part, so since the last time I did a video about this, I've been writing like four to 5,000 words a day. And it's just so funny. Once you get past that, <clears throat> that weird middle where all the things that you have to put in the story for the story to make sense have to be in here. Once all those things are in place, it's just like a downhill race. You're just like, you're typing like crazy. You're just jamming because you know where everything's going. You know where all the pieces lay. You know how to like hit everything. Um, but yeah, dude, middle suck. Um, and I was really worried when I was writing it because the pacing as I was writing felt like the middle really lagged and I was getting really like fearful that when I read the book I would get totally bored in the middle of the book and what was such an amazing surprise was that when I was reading it even though it took me a long time to write because I was like constantly worried about stuff and trying to make sure everything fit and everything was in there that I wanted in there I, w I was afraid that it would just like the pace would just like drop and it would just be a slow, boring read. But when I read it, dude, we were still snapping our fingers like this. We were just like boom, 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 boom. Um, so like that made me feel a lot better. So I think too, like when you just finishing a book is so fucking powerful for you as a writer because you're like I did it I finished the book like yeah I need to clean some stuff up yeah I need to go through um, and make sure all the halls are hills and none of the hills are halls and stuff like that but um, you're just like it's so good for you and it's just like you're like yeah I could do it and like I've written I don't know 20 books now um and still finishing one makes me feel like that sense of accomplishment. Like, oh my God, I can do this. And it's like, yeah, no shit, you could do this. You've been doing it, you fuck. But like, um, I still need that like, mm, like, yeah, you did it, dude. Um, so I'm glad that happened. But anyway, so this is just like a sigh of relief for me that a, I finished the book, and B, all the fears I had while I was writing the book aren't fears. Like, they're, they, were, they were not founded. Like, it all makes sense. It all flows perfect. Um, there's a couple... There's a couple chapters where... Um, because when I write, like, my chapters are very cliffhangery. Um, to get someone to turn the next page kind of thing. And I think there's a couple chapters where the things that I thought would be cliffhangery aren't cliffhangery. It's like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, so I might, like, um, change the wording of a sentence to make it punchier um, at the end of the chapters. But other than that, um, I'm really happy with it. But I will say this. Um, on my schedule... Um, I have the next gavel book, which is called Final Judgment, to um, kind of bookend that story that I was working on with that. And then I'm going right back to another Hank book because I need to write Hank in like the dirty streets of the city um, dealing with the scum of the earth and all this other stuff because this like putting him in this thing that like I would never have put him in like other than the fact that I had a neat idea for a story um 
I, I just, I want to put Hank back in the streets and, um, just for me, like I fucking need that as a palate cleanser. So anyway, <clears throat> so that's what's going on. Um, as soon as like cover art's done and, um, all that other shit, um, I'll let you guys know and all that. So, um, again, um, the first three Hank Bradshaw Dead Dame books are up on Amazon. Um, Dead Dame on the Floor, Dead Dame Walking, and Dead Dame in a Trunk. Um, you can pick those up there. And um, other than that, just stop by IHateMattWall.com. Um, get me on Patreon. Um, join up for that so you could get all the stuff that the patrons get. And other than that, I guess I will talk to you guys later. So take care.